Hi! <laughs> Welcome to the latest expression of my autism. This is infraspace, a factorial like where the roads are the belts. If you don't know what factorial is, well, one, what kind of gamer are you? Get good, scrub. Two, I'll explain to you. It's it's a game where you build a colony and you increase the level of automation and complexity with each research step reaching toward more and more advanced systems with some some kind of end goal or maybe not even with an end goal just the goal is to build the most sprawling factory you can possibly have infraspace it is a factorial light your goal is to repair every system in the spaceship which requires sending up a number of materials you see these are the materials that are necessary clearly you need to build the industry to support being able to send these materials up to space and once you are able to repair the entirety of the ship i would assume once you get there you get the option to be able to terraform the planet to your liking and instead of leaving in the colony ship for better pastures you actually stay here and terraform the planet to your liking. I'm very much looking forward to that. I, I want to see that in action because uh, it does get a little old to be looking at sand for the entirety of the playthrough. So I wonder if you eventually get to have a beautiful, beautiful grassy slopes and rolling hills where there was only rocks and sand before. But uh, that is like the super duper late game, the mute of your gameplay is going to be focused on those industries and those roads and providing materials for your population to live in better and better habitats. Most of the focus is in logistics and transportation. You don't have to worry too much about that technology tree. It is really not that huge. It is, you know, a sizable, sizable technology tree with the classic different colors of science that increase in complexity the requirements that you need. And that is what drives you to get better and better technologies so that you can get better and better technologies. And the main challenge of this game is to create a traffic network that is efficient, perhaps elegant, most of all entertaining, you can create all kinds of things. I am very, very pleased with the, the entire system of traffic. It's just so much fun to play around with. The game allows you to set your own level of challenge. If you want anything even remotely challenging in your colony building, you need to select car make, cars make round trips. That is the one thing that creates an actual logistical challenge. Otherwise, it is extremely straightforward. You can also limit the amount of, of room that you have if you choose a much, much smaller landing spot, or rather a, a mountain and terrible inactive volcano with not a whole lot of resources and places to build. Otherwise, when you start in the Desert Valley or a randomly generated map, you basically get all the space in the universe to be able to build whatever you want with how my, however much sprawl you want. And if you look at the traffic, even with this amount of density and complete disregard for separation of industries or whatever, there's barely any traffic jams. Traffic is extremely, extremely uh, loose and, you know, not much of a challenge. There's a terrible intersection here. That's, that's about it. This was my first foray into infraspace. And it depends on what you want out of a colony builder game with uh, the focus on the factorial kind of li gameplay loop. I enjoy a logistical challenge. I really like not so much, let's see how big I can make this thing. Let's build the whole map. I would rather have an environment like this where you actually had to put a quite a lot of thought into how to go about things. For example, I had to put a stupid amount of, of, of time and effort and, and thought into making a setup where the cars don't just back up forever. Even then, this looks pretty messy. This is like the best I came up with, but it's really like not 
optimized for real. I was like, let's make this roundabout and it all goes in one way that you get resources from the iron mines, go to the distribution center and, it, you know, it's well separated. They go back with the round trip, but some of them go down, provide the iron over here. The microchips require iron and copper. You got to have a copper mine. So the copper mine is over here with its own highway. Got that sweet intersection right here between the highways and the one-way streets. Make sure that traffic... Where are you going? Where are you going, little truck? Look at this. This iron trucker just earning a living wage, making money with his uh, del daily deliveries to, to Electronics Factory, number 772. Electronics Factory provide chips for... Electronics for the microchip factory, which provides microchip for the computer factory. If you have played Factorio or any kind of colony builder like this, you know exactly what you're looking at. That is the entire thing. You can also put some trains if the distances are great and the materials are voluminous. All the plastic factories throw their cargo into the train station and then the train goes all the way over there and unloads a bajillion plastic trucks into the there's the plastic trucks going coming out of the train station into the home appliances factory so what i thought we should do today let's solve a real world problem in infraspace it's not actually in the real world it's in infraspace i am in the middle of <clears throat> getting myself some yellow science packs so that I can get up to the research tree that requires yellow science packs, obviously. So we got the green science, the blue science. Let's upgrade to yellow science. What does yellow science production require? By the way, uh, a little note here. When you create a building next to buildings that supply that building, you get a efficiency boost, which is make make things faster inside that building, which is kind of detrimental in the sense that you're making things faster in a reduced amount of, of space. So you create more congestion as a result. But I, I just like the extra bonus of being efficient with building placement. I like the, the look and feel of it. So I, this is what I've been doing. Anyway, yellow science pack. Uh, obtainment requires motors, organic waste, methane, and green science pack. Green science pack, very easy. It's across the street. They just walk it over. Bob the intern goes across the street, delivers those green science packs. Methane, another extremely simple supply. You just pipe it all the way from the methane extraction factory and the power production right here. Plenty of leftover to pro provide methane to our yellow science. It also requires organic waste, which I have no way of obtaining right now and requires a whole nother industry altogether that I need to get around to. And then it also requires motors. And that's what we're going to provide right now. What does motor production require? Well, you make them in the motor factory. Here we have General Electric setting up shop what do they need to produce motors? Well, they need crude oil, which is also extremely easy. You just pipe it. You don't start with pipes. You research them. And then it makes uh, uh, any kind of liquid distribution. A piece of cake is super duper easy. You just pipe it from the oil fields. Extremely straightforward. What else does it require? It requires steel. I have a steel mill specifically built for this purpose. There's a small iron ore mine provides the steel mill with iron then you have some carbon and water and i mean oxygen and carbon atmosphere extractors and then the groundwater extractor they all provide materials to the steel mill so that the steel can be out of here and is sent over to the science area it's its own separated thing so that it doesn't get mixed in with the main steel production that goes into storage and that provides you with building materials so that that's the steel all sorted very very easy very nice 
What else does the motor require? It requires copper bars. How do you get copper bars? You get them in the copper mill. Mmm, how complicated, how crazy. I have been building without the grid. I thought, let's make it real spicy and build without the grid. When you create buildings on the grid, it creates this very organized, very square look to your colonies. And I didn't want to do have that. I wanted to have something a little bit more, more organic, more uh, chaotic, if you will. So we're going to put a whole pile of steel mills over here. It's a little finicky to do with that grid. You see me rotating this building like very, very uh, closely. When you use the grid, you don't have to deal with this complication. But it is a price to pay if you want to have something that is not adjusted to the square grid. Unfortunate, but that's about it. You need to make sure that, see that little street that connects to the road? You need to make sure that that happens. Otherwise, the building will complain that it has no access to roads. And you will be very sad because nothing shall be provided to that building. So now the copper mills have been established. I really don't care too much about ratios. How many of these mills do I need to provide for the motor factory to be 100% efficient? Basically, I just plunk them down. And it's like, is that enough? Super. I have a sur surplus? Okay, fine. Whatever. I don't give a crap. Uh, I, I don't have enough. Okay, I'll just plunk down more until the supply is enough. You see the giant pile of chemicals being provided already by the chemical extraction area right here only comes out of these plants over here so you have to make a giant pile of chemical extractions and uh the network has been set up efficiently enough that there was no real traffic jam when you plunk them down they ask for a ton of resources at the same time and that's why the pile of trucks suddenly came in and then after that is done production they will trickle in much more uh, um spaced in between each other so anyway the plastics the plastic the chemical production already sorted easy but it also needs copper ore where do we have copper ore we have to look at the map here's some uranium methane uranium <laughs> no copper anywhere here is some sulfur there's aluminum just sticking it ah there's some copper all right i have a copper mine already but this is all being uh, siphoned out to the chip and electronics area don't really want to and besides you know it's freaking long it's like the longest distance i could make another train i suppose but you know there's this virgin copper ore and there's already a highway that goes all the way to the science area seems logical to me to create a copper mine operation that then takes advantage of that highway. So let's put down, I want the big mines. Those are the baby mines. These are the large mines. Get me some copper mines. Actually, first, let's create the road so that it's easier to snap the mines to it. A road straight through the mining, the, the, the pile of copper. It looks pretty funky. It really should clear, you know, make space for the road but you know that's a minor gripe um go to mines large mines large copper mine let's attach a pile of them to this road you can be a little bit more finicky you, you can disable the snapping and that way you can make them oh, a little bit closer to each other it's you know if you are super duper autistic i guess you can do that but you can just use the snapping tool to just line them up this is way more copper that i'll ever need to create the the steel in the steel mill and this is dedicated for that steel mill so let's just have six mines right there and now we just put down the giant mega hot highway let's put them a uh, four lane i don't think it's going to be necessary to do anymore let's make it a curved road i suppose you, you don't just enable this and you get roads like this then you can go in and click on this button make them curved but you know why do that when you can you can start i'm really impressed by the way by the networking and road system in this game is is the star of infraspace and it's very good i really like it it could be better it could be better because there are some funky junctions and stuff that do happen 
But overall, it is a very impressive system. Am I going too far afield? Nah. Let's just do that. Let's, let's do it so that it merges and we're going to create a sweet intersection. Something like the traffic is not going to be necessary to have an intersection happening, uh, you know, with r exit ramps and all that stuff. That's really not necessary for the traffic that's going to be generated by this. Let's make it so that it goes under. Okay, it goes under. Oh, and then it, there's going to be a number of ramps making the joint. Because that's like the, one of the most enjoyable things. Stuff like this happens when you build roads. They get fixed just by clicking the things like, okay, okay, I did a boo-boo, let me uh, reset a little bit. So you do need to look close, look closely to what you're building, make sure that the system did not bork out, but it has a very, very simple, very straightforward fix. It's really not that big a deal, and it's kind of satisfying when you click that and it's like, oh, oh, it's straightened up so nicely. All right, so like I said, the traffic it is like, I simply could do... Let me show you what I could do, and I'm, then I'll show you what I'm going to do. I simply could just... And there will be a perfectly reasonable intersection of highways. You've seen this on American roads every day. It's a giant highway, and then you come to a T-section, and you have, and there's like a traffic light. Which what you can use. There's traffic lights. There's yield signs. There's nothing. Or you can just have uh, lanes... And this basically works like a four-way. I just use this and nothing else. <laughs> I feel like traffic lights, obviously they are necessary in real life. They are not necessary in infraspace. I feel like just having intersections like that is by far the most efficient. Where am I? I want to go back to, to this area where I've finished. I have mess with the traffic the most i feel like this is the most efficient intersection you can have people go when they have to go they will wait for each other and there's never traffic accidents so you don't need a traffic light to regulate accidents everybody obeys exactly the traffic rules of right of way and all that stuff so uh putting in traffic lights always seems like you're just slowing things down for no reason i have not Maybe the situation exists where you want them and need them. I have not come across that. So just take that for what it is. What is happening here? Oh, I already joined. I didn't realize. <laughs> it will, the system would just start working right away because there is power being supplied by uh, the power lines right here that happen to run by the copper. The road is joined and it has access straight to the mill so the problem is solved the copper is being supplied but that is not the way i wanted to do it though you see how traffic is perfectly reasonable there is really no reason to be fancy here i'm gonna do it anyway delete that give me this thing we're going to put a highway that goes under and then we're going to create a few one-way joints oh right all right so uh the thing is this road, these people, they will never want to go to the freaking aluminum. Uh, so let me actually... To the freaking aluminum mines. So you can actually simplify it quite a lot. People that come from here go down the way. Actually, I mean, let's make it a little bit better. It needs to look like an actual highway. You can be a, a total dumbass and, weir and weirdo and not give a crap of aesthetics click that and this works but come on brother come on this this what kind of uh, no highway patrol will will approve this this is violating a bajillion osha regulations don't do this respect yourself a little bit more put that junction a little bit further up back make it so that it has a gentle slope and a gentle curve and it joins uh, the thing is it is kind of being uh it's being hampered by the by the curve here so what we're gonna do gonna go far back a little bit and we're going to get this highway 
I guess he can simply do something like this. He can just join right there. It looks a little funky. Looks a little funky, not gonna lie. But it's perfectly reasonable. Then the other ramp goes like this. And we're going to have a nice gentle slope to join. That is not a nice gentle slope. Does not please me. <laughs> Must be a little bit. Okay, that's way too much. Go over there and then it joins. Way, way, way too big this ramp, but whatever. And then, you know, it looks all funky. Let's make it nice and curved. Make sure all the cur all the um, all the lines are smooth and beautiful. Clearly, this uh, there should be some s signals in this junction. But every trucker in infraspace it is a super ace at following traffic rules, knowing exactly where they're going. N please, please, no U-turns, no U-turns. You're going to cause an accident. All right, there you go. And now it's a little bit more fancy, a little more smooth. I like it much better. This is. Uh, I don't like how this looks, so we can actually adjust it a little bit, you know, make a, the ramp. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Maybe, uh, I don't like, I don't like that one bit. Please. I guess that's fine. I guess that's, a, that's a good junction. Don't worry about it too much. I'm being extremely autistic. Anyway, we got it. We got it. Beautiful joint. And I feel like that's a, a great representation of what you're going to be doing in infraspace. You're going to be adjusting traffic lanes. And it is very satisfying. I don't know your sensibilities. I don't know if you enjoy that kind of thing. But solving these tra traffic puzzles, I've been really, really enjoying infraspace just because of it. And, you know, of figuring out all the industries and all that stuff. So what we can do now is look at this thing and figure out, all right, am I providing enough copper? bars to my motor factory so there's enough motors to supply the yellow science pack factory i cannot really quite tell yet because it's not producing yellow science packs because i also need organic waste unfortunately but at least i can do the production overview go over here and say that hey for now i am producing 30 bars and the demand is only 14.7 so basically i have twice as many factories as i as i need for the copper bars that are being asked. Uh, so that's that's basically the analysis. If you are ever in a worker shortage, you can adjust these bars like, oh no, don't dedicate so many people to oxygen production. That's too many people. Of course, your production will suffer, but there's a lot of leeway. See how, you know, there's still enough production to meet the demand. So you can adjust that if you ever find yourself uh, lacking people, which was a problem in the early game. It is not a problem anymore. But in the early game, it was a, a rough time to have enough workers for all the industries that you need to start up your colony. Anyway, that's Infraspace. That is the experience in the middle game. And to I anticipate is basically the exact same thing all the way to terraforming. And the, I don't know how that actually plays out. Seems like maybe a victory lap at the end. That's about it. Uh, because you, you'll have accomplished everything that you wanted to accomplish. So there you go. I have supplied copper to my yellow science pack. Probably I'll want more than two, but just because they are located here, look at the giant pile of efficiency. Basically, each one of these counts for like two or three uh, science pack producers. Probably will want more than this, but that is a little microcosm of the problems that you're going to be solving in infraspace. Really, really like it. Haven't noticed any bugs. People have complained in the discussion forums on Steam about bugs. Haven't seen anything other than little glitches like this. Like this does happen. Maybe if you click on the, you know, adjust that a little bit. Oh, look at that. It disappeared. But, you know, little glitches like that I have noticed plenty. But bugs itself, anything being broken, anything borked or anything, like the roads will sometimes bork themselves and look really, really weird. It does allow for a lot of jankiness. You can create a road here, and uh, it is hard to exemplify. Maybe something something like this. It'll allow you to join it, but it will say, hey, this doesn't work. Sometimes it will say that it works, and it's basically a 90% incline. <laughs> so, you know, it'll look funky, but still work. You can get away with a lot of jankiness like that and still make it work. 
But of course, my uh, aesthetic sensibilities will not allow that to be a thing. Anyway, I've uh, yapped for long enough. That's Inference Space, everybody. Get to building, get to providing more technology for these whiny little bitches in the habitats that require 20 bajillion things. This intersection, I need to do something. This intersection, this is this is a nightmare. This is the work of the devil. It needs to be reworked. Oh, that's the thing that I'm going to do next. <laughs>